No. No. <laughs> okay, today we're talking about making inferences. Anybody know what an inference is? It's a... Hold on, I gotta think about this. I'm like... Prediction. That's usually the idea, like when you raise your hand, you know what it is before you... No, because I get it, conf I get it okay. mixed up. Matt? Uh, Marcos? Oh, you lost it? Oh, you, you, were, you were talking to oh, Matt. Oh, that Matt. I have a good explanation. All right, man. What? I thought before, beforehand. A thought? Beforehand. Beforehand. Oh, oh, I, I don't know, I know where you got that from. Is that not conclusion. right? A conclusion? That's pretty good. An inference I was gonna say an is guess. a thought. An educated guess. This, I have, that's a I, guess. I, I, so far, you're the furthest off, Matt. A hypothesis. Something to be proud of. Okay, a hypothesis. Any other ideas what an inference is? I infer. I infer that Matt. That is it is snowing outside. outside. No, that I is not an inference. No, no. That's an observation. I infer that I, the sun is no, and you don't have any evidence to suggest I that. that is coming I, I infer that I would probably smack Cam in the head. Oh. Alright, let's that instead of just being silly since you guys don't know what you're talking about, let's talk about what it actually is, okay? So, the idea of an educated guess is pretty good. I like the idea of suggestion, okay? What do things suggest, okay? Um, so, one thing that just was mentioned is it is snowing outside. That would not be an inference. That's an observation. That's something that is actually happening, okay? But... The fact that, did you notice that Red Mountain is making snow? Make so there's snow on the mountain, snow. and it's snowing outside? Yeah. What might we infer from those things? We might say, I think they're going to open the ski hill within the next couple weeks, right? Because yeah. they're making, they want to, they're putting snow on the mountain, it's also snowing, the conditions are right. That would be suggesting, they'll give us evidence why? Because they're making snow on the mountain. That's evidence that they want to open the ski hill. That would be an inference, but you have to have evidence. You can't just say aliens are going to blow up the planet. <clears throat> Unless you see like a big spaceship like hovering in like a beam starting to come down. Okay? Then that would be an inference. All right. Uh, chapter in a nutshell. Ideas are often suggested rather than being stated directly. So when you have to figure it out, we have to infer those ideas, okay? So what is suggested from the text? To make logical inferences, what does logical mean? Um, something that makes logic. Or something sense. that is understandable. Okay, those are all pretty good definitions. Something that makes sense, <laughs> something that follows um, how you would think about things. Um, or you just said that already forgot. We must look closely at the information available and use our own experience and common sense. Inferences are ideas that are not stated directly. So, again, just because it's snowing outside, that is not an inference. They are conclusions on what we come to based on what we see, hear, and read. All right, so let's look at this uh, picture. So you have the boy, says, what does, he, what does he say there, Marcos? Relax, mom. It's macaroni. Good. So the boy's got like macaroni noodles attached to his face, right? And that's mom. What does her hair look like? A dude. Well, it kind of looks like a dude's just standing on him like, oh, I can't believe it. Oh, gee. Actually, right? like, the kid, kid looks like a mom. <laughs> yeah, the kid looks more <laughs> like a mom. <laughs> <laughs> the kid looks like a mom. <laughs> Well, usually women have like longer hair like and they don't stand no. it up, right? That was dad. Her hair looks like the looks like the bird and um, what is it? Um, I forgot what it's called. What the show was called? Charlie Brown, the bird. What's Charlie Brown? Oh, 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 oh yeah. that thing. Yeah, it does. Now that I don't think I've ever seen Charlie Brown. Oh, I see it now. Yeah. I see it. I see it. <laughs> it does look like that little yellow bird yeah. from Charlie Brown that always hangs around, I think, Snoopy. I think it's like yeah, Snoopy. Yeah, I'm trying to... Oh, I guess it does kind of a shape. I don't know what you guys are no, talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. 
Wait, so her hair's on you, she's like shocked, right? You got that so far? Yo. Okay, which of these two inferences is most logically based on the information suggested by the cartoon? Uh, Roxanne, you want to read those two? Okay, so an inference is a suggestion based on evidence, right? Something that we can figure out based on the evidence. So we have to have evidence for one of those to be true. Which one do you think has evidence that it could be true? Two. Number two, the boy had not warned his mother what he was going to do. What is the evidence that he didn't warn his mother? Good, so using the words relax, like she's like, oh, like all freaking out, right? And then she's like, relax, mom. Right, it's just a joke, it's just macaroni. So it implies that she was not warned. If she was warned, then she would not be shocked. Or you wouldn't have to tell her relax. Good. The boy's mother would not seem so shocked by her son's appearance if she approved the body piercing. Also, her son is telling her to relax, the sign that she's upset. This is not a logical inference. If the boy had warned his mother that she was going to do, her hair would not be standing on end and her eyes bugging out. She is clearly shocked by her son's appearance. This is a logical inference. Yeah. All right, which of these inferences is most logically based on information suggested by the cartoon? You want to read those, Jasmine? Three impacts the morning time after taking over the body. Okay, nice job reading. Okay, which one of those is a logical inference? Four. Number four. Okay, tell me why number four. Okay, so the use of the word it's macaroni to imply that no, this is a, these aren't real piercings. He doesn't say, no, I didn't get piercings, did he? If it did, then it would be an inference, it would be an observation. But he did say it's macaroni, thus implying or inferring that he did not really get body piercings. Okay, so there's evidence to suggest something, even if it's not stated directly. Okay, how about number three? Why is number three wrong then? <coughs> Might not be a surprise. Okay, I can buy that, but we don't know anything about any conversation they've had before this, too. We have no idea what's just happened. It's just a cartoon. Uh, number five, why is number five wrong? Because we don't see piercings on her. Okay, we don't see any piercings on her. You might expect that with a female to have piercings, but she's not wearing earrings, so it doesn't even have like holes, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's nothing in there to suggest that she has body piercings, apart from women more often have it than men, right? That's kind of true, but we don't see anything on her. I don't know if that's really true anymore. Do the girls, do girls have ear piercings? Yeah, yeah. Do do? I don't I don't use them all. Oh, okay. Um, all right, number three, why is it wrong? Nothing suggests that the boy had asked if he could get body piercings. Number four, the boy is telling his mother that what appear to be body piercings are only macaroni. This is a logical inference. Nothing in the picture or words suggests that the body's mother, boy's mother, has body piercings of her own. So those are two logical inferences based on the cartoon. Okay? Inferences about visual materials. Here's another cartoon. Class, who can tell me what I have preserved in this jar? No, it's not a pig or a baby cow. It's the last student who got caught cheating on one of my tests. Dun dun dun. So this I can. Okay. Got understand the cartoon? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, which of these two inferences is most logically based on the information suggested by the cartoon? Can you want to read those two? Class has just finished taking the test. The teacher is taking about two minutes. Okay, for it to be an inference, we have to have evidence, okay? So which of those two do we have evidence? What can we put 
doesn't suggest based on evidence. Okay, the teachers took about cheating in this class. What is the evidence, if that is true, to support it? Preserve the child in the job. No, <laughs> it doesn't say that, for, for starters. Uh, uh, because so yeah, okay, so yeah. he's suggesting that if you cheat, you're going to end up at a job, right? Is he joking? Yeah, yeah but at the same time, he's, for real. he's being serious about no cheating, right? He wants the students to understand that. Um, so the teacher is strict about chi in this class. There we have the jar, if we take that literally. Um, but out of those two options, why would number one be wrong? The class is just finished with taking the test. Even though it's a quiz today. Quiz today? But what if it's at the end of the class? Um, Do we know what well, time I mean, it is? You're going to know when. I mean, he just showed you. There's no evidence about him saying. Right, and if you're warning your class to not cheat, you're probably gonna would you do that after they take the test? No. Well, yeah. no, right? But no, all the things that you guys said, but think about he's warning them not to cheat, and that you wouldn't do that after the test, right? Okay. Experience tells us that teachers give warnings like this before the test begins, not after. This is not a logical inference. From the stern warning, do you know what stern means? Serious. Very serious, strong, strict. Yeah. Do you guys have your fluids list? You didn't know that one? Let me put that stern. Okay. From the stern warning the teacher gives the class as he holds up the jar, we can infer that he's strict about cheating in his class. This is a logical inference. All right, uh, let's read those three. Matthew? All right. Uh, the specimen in the jar is really a baby pig. Uh, more students cheat in biology class than in other classes. The teacher wants his students to be afraid to, te to cheat. Okay, so the specimen might be a word you don't know. If you put that in your fluids list, if you do not know it, specimen. you should have a total of 25 by Friday. Okay? And it will go in the grade book. So the other department have that done. All right, now, um, which of those three, you raise your hands, do you think number three? Is the right one. The specimen of the jar is really a baby pig. So nobody thinks that number three is right? How do we know that number three is not a logical inference? Okay, Marcos. Uh, because it says it's, uh, it is not a pig or a baby cow. Okay, so it's not a pig or a baby cow. A baby <laughs> pig is still a pig. So, right. Um, how about number four? Morrison's cheating biology class than in other classes. Does anybody think that one? Okay, if you don't think that one, then how do we know it's not that one? It doesn't say, like... It's right there, biology. Okay, they're in biology class. It doesn't say that they cheat more, than, cheat more in biology than other classes. Well, he is giving a warning to his biology class. Or any, any other, like a math teacher class. Okay, it doesn't have anything in there about math class. Good. So it has to all have evidence for it. We don't know what it's if other classes have that problem. Maybe his class does, but we don't know if that's more than other classes, right? Okay, the last one, number five, the teacher wants us students to be afraid to cheat. Is that a logical inference? Yes? Based on what? Um, Good, so it's saying if you cheat, you're gonna end up in a job, right? Even if he's joking. Okay, safely assume that the specimen jar is not really a student, since teachers are not permitted to preserve students. Maybe a baby pig, maybe a cow, just pretend animal. However, we don't know exactly what it is. More students cheat in biology class, can't be that one. Nothing in the cartoon suggests that students are any more likely to cheat in a biology class than in other classes. Holding up to preserve cheating student is a sign that the teacher wants his students to be afraid to cheat. This is a logical inference. Book cover. All right. Book cover. What does it say on the book cover? Um, did you? The writing of the four trees on the tree. Okay. Pay attention to the people, what they look like, etc. 
Which of these two inferences is most logically based on the information given on the book cover? You want to read those, uh, Suki? People who should hear all are, are all Jesus about these men are seldom and What is seldom, Roxana? Oh, no? If you don't know that word, that'd be a good one for your fluency list. Yes? Yes. What's seldom? Because uh, if I can't go through the lessons and you don't know them, we're really having a hard time. Um, so you can just go and type that word in if you don't know it. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a minute to put it in. What is seldom? That what? The person that actually did it. No. No. All right, you don't know what the word seldom oh, means. Oh, no. What would be a good way to figure out? Okay, I see you cheat going to the learner's dictionary. That's good. Almost never, right? Rarely. So if you didn't know what that word means, it'd be hard to make an inference about. Men are seldom, or almost never. So maybe one out of a hundred times, abuse victims. That's kind of what it's saying. Okay, which of those are logical inference based on the book cover? All right, Matt. Uh, I say number one. Okay. The people pictured here are all abuse survivors. How do you know that? Because on the front page, it says, or the title says, Survivor, Surviving Abuse, and all those people are saying, or like, they're yeah, It also category. says four true stories, right? How many yeah. pictures are there? Four. four. Okay. Okay, why is number two not true? In other words, what's, what evidence do we have to suggest that number two is not true? Matt? Because there's two men on the cover. Okay, good. There's two men, two women. So that's 50 50. <clears throat> if there's only one man on the cover, then maybe, right? But since it's half half, that wouldn't make sense. All right. A title, Surviving Abuse, for True Stories, suggests that the four people pictured on the cover are all abuse survivors. This is a logical inference. Two of the abuse victims, what does it mean if you're an abuse victim? You've been abused. Yeah. Somebody has hurt you. Maybe they hit you. Maybe they called you names, right? Uh, made you feel bad about yourself every day. Maybe they locked you in a room for a couple days to punish you. Those kind of things. That's abuse. Um, what's that? Yeah, definitely. Um, and there's also an uh, abuser. That'd be the person doing it, right? If you're the person hitting somebody, you are the abuser. If you're the abuse victim, you will know what happens. If someone had things happen to you. Okay. All right, uh, three, four, and five. Jazz, are you going to do those? All right, how about number three? Let's go through them one at a time. Some of the people pictured are abusers, and some are abuse victims. I just explained the difference between abusers and abuse victims. What do you think, Roxanne? Do you think that one is right, number three? No? Okay, what in there? Explain to me how number three is wrong. I agree with you. First of all, you're right. But tell me why number three is wrong. Of the abusers? Okay, are they the people in the pictures abusers or are they abuse victims? No, they're abusers. Okay, good. So it says some are abusers, some are abuse victims. How do we know that's not a mix or that it's all abuse victims? What in the on the book cover, it tells us that maybe they're all abuse victims. I'm asking Roxanne. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Okay, what on the cover lets us know that they're all of there's these? There's a white or something like these. Okay, good. That's what I'm looking for. I know that it's probably obvious to you guys, but you need to, when you're making inferences, there's a really important reading skill. You have to use the evidence there to make suggestions about what it's saying. Okay, you can't just base it on only what you think. Number four, abuse is a problem for more than one ethnic group. Do you know what ethnic group means? Sure, we could might call it race. A better word though would be culture group. Okay, race is more general. That's like Asian, right? European. Hispanic, but when we say ethnic group, there are at least three ethnic groups in here. Now maybe some of you Asians are Lao instead of Thai, or you're Hmong instead of Thai, etc. Right? But I think most of you guys are Hmong, probably. Yes. So that's one ethnic group. I am Mika. Right? <laughs> I'm a whitey. Cotton called Caucasian American is the political term for it. And Roxanne, we could classify her as Mexican American, or we could say Hispanic, right? Either way, there's at least three ethnic groups in here. Okay, what do you think about number four? Is that one correct or not? Cam, what do you think? Yes? Yes? Okay, tell me why. Um, well, it's looking at the picture. I think that. I think so too. Yeah, I can't really see. Which one? Yeah, I can agree. Maybe black, maybe um, Hispanic. I think she's Hispanic. But Hispanic. Mm -hmm. And then I, that guy in the top he's left, I think that guy is Asian. I don't know. Asian? I okay. I would have gone black, but it doesn't really matter. I, I can't really do that. That's cool. On the bottom looks Asian. So the guy on the bottom looks Asian? Yeah, the bottom <laughs> left. <laughs> no, he looks black. <laughs> All right, okay. Wait, I don't see black. Maybe Wasian. I don't know the guy on the bottom. The technical term for, for white is Caucasian. Caucasian, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what he is. Yeah. I don't know if it makes sense either. It's not Caucasian. I don't actually have to look at where that comes from. Okay, is there more than one ethnic group in the picture? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are we assuming that it doesn't tell us that it's a problem for more than one ethnic group, but there's more than one ethnic group in the picture, so that makes it suggest that it's a problem for more than one ethnic group. So it's not just about black people or Hispanics or whites, right? Okay. Um, so there is evidence for that. People in the cover represent three ethnic groups, suggesting that people of abuse, problem of abuse cuts across all ethnic boundaries, logical inference. If you don't know the word ethnic, that's a great word for your going to list. Really. Okay, the smile. How about, ooh, I need to go back. Why is number five wrong? All right, Matt. Uh, it doesn't say that his or her life is ruined. Like okay, it. that's a good thought. Yes, you're right. Um, what does it mean if your life is ruined? Yeah, nothing. Everything is bad. Like, are you happy? No. Okay, what in there suggests the opposite? They're all smiling. Okay, so they can't be doing that bad, right? It should be a picture of them like depressed, like depressed or black and white, so them kind of like laying around and hating life, right? If their life is ruined, but then that might be a logical inference. All right. Smiling face of the people in the cover suggests that being the victim of abuse need not ruin a person's life. So does the title Surviving Abuse. Oh, well, just because you survive something doesn't mean you're happy. Okay, let's look at the photograph. Describe the photo for me quick. A homeless person. Homeless person. Okay, probably homeless. Oh, I mean, just well, wearing a lot of clothes, or is he like going bathing? Or he might, or he might be a red person dressing up like one. Okay, yeah, so like it's a YouTube video. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Although, you know, there's actual, in China, the beggars, you have to be really careful. Yeah. Why? Yes, yes. Because there's lots of fake beggars. Yeah. Same with Asia. And so. It's like the fake and like they don't have money. And yeah, and they're begging. 
Yeah. Lots of old ladies do that in China. I don't know about Mexico or, but I'm sure Thailand and stuff is the same. <laughs> but the rich people, right? There's rich people begging on the streets. So what I would do is if people ask me, I would say, are you hungry? And then if they say yes, then I'll say, okay, well then follow me. I'll go buy something to eat. <laughs> right? I, usually, I also usually carry in China like food on me. I would offer them the food. The ones that accepted it. Or uh, really the real thing. The, the ones are like, no, we knew we're not the thing. Well, wait, isn't, right? isn't it all like a deal? Like, is there are you a real deal? You know? Like, when they all buy stuff, they can't get money when it's cheap. So it's just like coffee. When I first went there in 2001, China was really cheap. Now it's like more expensive. Japan's pretty expensive. Really? Four or five dollars for coffee. Yeah. For what? Yeah. China too. Coffee is not cheap in China. How much is coffee in China? Did you get scammed? Um, no, they tried to scam me a lot. Because I was, <laughs> we own something way? called the Puff Puff car. And it was this like a motorcycle with like a little bench in the back. And then it like, it's called that because that's the feeling you get. Puff Puff Puff, you're always bumping up and down in the seat. And the little ladies are always trying to charge my double or triple. Everybody else paid them like, no, I live here at this winter, and you're not going to cheat me today. <laughs> and sometimes I would just pay it because, you know, they thought I had a lot of money, which was not true. But I'm like, yeah, it's, they're not living at large either. So I remember giving a lot of food away, though, that helped to get about two and a half. And yeah, they appreciate it. I remember one man in particular digging through the garbage. You know, and I went to like a local sandwich shop and I brought him this chicken sandwich. <laughs> he kept like thanking me and thanking me. <laughs> you know, I was like so happy to have that. Oh, anyway. All right, let's look at this photograph. Uh, which of these three is most likely based on information given in the photograph? Number one, the man is a drug addict. Or number two, what does number two say? Yeah. All right. So, which one do you think? has evidence to suggest that. Number two. Number two. Okay, why is there evidence for him being homeless and suddenly a drug addict? He has a shopping cart, maybe with shopping. Oh, What's this? Shopping. He, what's that? What did you say, Rex? Nothing? Oh, okay. What suggests that he is homeless? Okay, he's wearing a lot of clothes to keep himself warm. If he's outside, he wouldn't need to do that, sitting in one spot if he had his own home, right? And he's got all of his, a lot of belongings in that shopping cart, which does not look like a new PlayStation, right? So he didn't just go shopping at Best Buy. No, he's just got a bunch of things in there. That's probably everything he owns. Okay, number one, a man is a drug addict. We don't see any drug Okay, very good. We don't see any, like, either, like, joints, or, like, cigarette butts, or needles, or anything related to drugs. That might keep my be a drug addict, but we actually don't know if he is. There's nothing in there. Even if there were like a needle on the side, it wouldn't necessarily suggest that he is, but it'd be a lot better than homeless. Or than not having a drug. You know what I'm saying? Okay, here we go. Although experience tells us that sometimes people who sleep in the streets are drug addicts, there's nothing in this photograph that tells us this man is a drug addict. Common sense tells us that a man who has a home would not be sitting on a street corner with all his apparent possessions in a shopping cart. This is a logical inference. What does a parent mean? That might be, I'm not talking about mom or dad. That could be a good one for your fluency list. A parent. A P P A R E N T. If you don't know it, guess what? Fluency list. A parent. Oh, a parent. His things, his belongings. No. His belongings. No. His possessions are belongings. A parent means what seems to be. So his what seems to be it possessions. Because what seems to be there is his possessions. No, that shopping cart could just be full, and he might be sitting next to it too. We don't know necessarily that those are his things, right? But it seems to be his since he's sitting right next to him. Sounds like appearance. So, appearance. Yeah. appearance. What it looks like. Uh, appearance. You can, if that helps you remember it, yes, that's a very good way to remember it. Yep. 
parents, yeah. Parent, yeah. Parent. If you guys don't have 25 words in your school, to list, this would be a great time to put that one down. That's a very useful word. All right, let's read those three. Uh, Roxana, you read those? All right, which of those? Let's just start with one by one. Number three, the man is thinking about his past. He's looking down, maybe. Okay, do we have evidence to know what he is thinking about? No. Nope. No. Okay, so we can't use that as an inference. We have to have evidence, right? We can't just assume things. All right, number four. The man is trying to stay warm. Yes? He has, no. He has a lot of layers on him. Okay, so if you have a lot of layers on you, you might be trying to stay warm. Yeah, but I mean Would you wear a lot of clothes in the middle of summer? Yes. No, you would? I would. I actually do. I don't. So you I, I still wear this I still wear this like in the summer. That's so you wear a hat and a gloves and boots and long and like three oh, jackets. No, my jacket, yeah. Okay. Why well, are you saying he was probably naturally cold? But does it make sense that he's trying to stay warm? Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, yes. It, it looks, what, what is the evidence that suggests he's trying? Because he's wearing warm? layers. Oh, okay. Let's go on. Let's see if number five is better. <clears throat> number five, the man knows where he will sleep tonight. Well, I mean, he's homeless. So. Do you know he's homeless? No. He has a wooden shopping cart. Okay. All right, so we're still assuming he's homeless. <clears throat> and he's so if he knew where he was going to sleep tonight, would he be out in the middle of the street? No. No, probably not. I mean, maybe if he was like talking to somebody there, then it would be different, but it seems to me that with all those blankets and all that stuff there, he doesn't know he's going to sleep tonight. Okay? Yeah. Maybe... Um... Maybe they must have been like the homeless guy who would tell him <laughs> to tell the other guy to watch his cart for him and possibly. Yep. Big maybe's, but we don't have any suggestions for that. Uh, we don't have any evidence for that. That's why we can't get the ruler out. I see, I see the only thing that is obvious is enough is he's trying to stay warm. He's wearing warm clothes. Okay. Okay. We don't know what the man is thinking about. He may not even be awake. Number four. Man is bundled up, wearing a hood and a hat and gloves, and he is sitting in sunlight. These facts suggest that he's trying to stay warm. This is a logical inference. Nothing suggests whether or not the man knows where he'll sleep tonight. In addition, if the man knew where he would be sleeping that night, he might be less likely to be resting in the middle of the day. Yes? He does kind of look like he's resting. Yeah, but why do it in the middle of the day if he knew he was going to sleep at night? All right, as a preceding cartoons, book cover, and photograph make clear, we live in a world full of images and we make inferences about such visual materials all the time. In the same way, we can make inferences about written material we can read between the lines and pick up ideas the writer only suggests or implies. You've already practiced making inferences while reading in chapter three, vocabulary and context. Looking at a sentence from that chapter, assets, such as good health, a loving family, and an enjoyable job make life warm. A sentence does not tell us exactly what assets mean, so it doesn't give us a definition, right? We have to figure it out. However, it does suggest that assets are valuable things, such as good health, a loving family, and an enjoyable job. We can then infer that assets means things of value. In our everyday reading, we often read between the lines and pick up ideas that are not often, are not directly stated in print. To make such inferences, we use clues provided by the writer, and we also may apply our own experience, logic, and common sense. Read the following paragraph. Go ahead, Cam. My wife is a murderer. I got her a client as a surprise one month anniversary gift. She proceeded to, to kill it. She wasn't trying to kill it. But she was just. But she doesn't exactly have a great green thumb. In the belief that all living things require water, she began flooding the plant on a daily basis. Basis. Be careful not to overwater it. I warned plants don't 
Cleanse the interior as well as water before finishing the plant, and then dump on another gallon of water. The thicker a plant, the sicker, the sicker the plant got, the more she watered it. Finally, it melted away into a oozing heap. One day, I returned home to see that the plant and its pot had simply disappeared. It had not been married that long yet. I figured the safest thing to do was to say nothing. All right. Reddit, this job. Which at first is mostly lie, most logically based on the information given. The woman did not believe the man's advice. A woman intentionally killed the plant. Do you know what intentionally means? Yeah, you do it on purpose. What would be the opposite of intentionally? Unintentionally? Oh, you could say unintentionally. Not on purpose. <laughs> Accidentally. Right? Accidentally. But unintentionally is, is also an opposite, but accidentally would be a better answer now. Okay. Uh, so, which one? The woman did not believe the man's advice. Is that a lot of advice? Or the woman intentionally killed the plant? It seems kind of like both. I mean, it looks like she, like she heard it, but she just kept on doing it. So it seems like <laughs> she was doing it intentionally. Okay, let's talk about number one then. The woman did not believe the man's advice. Is there evidence that she did not believe the man's advice? No. Okay, what is the action? She keeps on watering. Yeah, she keeps on watering. Okay, so be careful not to overwater it, he says. Plant seed air as well as water. So he tells her not to overwater it. Then she says, okay. And then what does she do? Dumps on more water. Okay, so was she listening to the man's advice? <laughs> no, it's just not really. The sicker okay. it looks, the more water she puts. So that okay, good. It was like she gave us one more spray. Yeah. Okay, how about, so we think number one is right. Let's look at number two. Could number two be the answer? Yes, because it says the more stickers the plant looks, the more water she gets. Okay, let's read it again. My wife is a murderer. I got her a plant as a surprise one-month anniversary gift, and she proceeded to kill it. It sounds like she intentionally killed it, yes? What does it say next, though? She wasn't trying to kill it. Huh? She wasn't. She, she wasn't she trying really, to kill it. She you know, heard it. Misleading. The, she my wife heard is misleading. it. But she doesn't exactly have a great thought. So was she trying to kill the plant or no? Nope. No. No. So number two, the woman intentionally killed the plant. Is that true? That right. No, that would not be a logical inference because it says on the opposite. No, those first two sentences, he's kind of like making a joke out of it, right? He says she's a murderer, blah, blah, blah. I always tell the story about when I had a pet rat. Um, and I love the rat. It was Big. It was white and a rat this tail on my arm. Oh, did it have like red eyes? Yeah. And... Yeah. So it was like one of the coolest pets I ever had. My mom hated my rat tail. Well, <laughs> right? Which mom was? So I was gone for two weeks on a trip and I asked my mom to feed the rat. Came home. The rat was dead. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it had, okay, it has like one of those little playhouses in the rat cage. Yeah. <laughs> there was no rat playhouse because guess what? My mom did not feed the rat. So it ate its own playhouse. No lie. That's how hungry it was. Okay? It didn't have any water. And I'm like, Mom, my rat! I thought she intentionally killed my rat. She says, No, I'm sorry, I forgot about it. Okay? I still think she did it, but she Or maybe she actually did do it on purpose. You never know. Yeah, I guess maybe that would have like a Yeah. I also did something kind of bad. I had lizards growing up, like little tiny lizards, kind of like these little grasshoppers. And I bet you, I bet you, you probably tall mini. I like, bet you, you probably terrorized them. Like, no, I didn't know to spray the cage with water, so they just like dehydrated and dried out and died. It's pretty bad. Okay, sorry, I'll stop the, the stories. Tell me. The woman continues to water the plant heavily after her husband's warning. She obviously did not believe the advice. This is a logical inference. And then says that his wife wasn't trying to kill the plant because she simply lacks a green thumb. We can infer that she accidentally, not intentionally killed the plant. And then states that his wife's a murderer for comic effect. People cannot murder plants. All right. How about which out of these three do you think, Suki? Read the three and then we'll figure it out. The man knows more about plants than the wife does.
Okay? Which one is a logical inference? One. I mean, number three. Oh, yeah, the first one. Sure. So the man knows more about plants than his wife does. How do we know that? Is it because he's telling the wife what to do? And it doesn't, and he's not yelling at her or she Okay, he's giving you advice. And because she didn't listen to his advice, the plant died. And he that would definitely give us evidence that he knows more, right? If he, she didn't listen and then the plant like did really well, well then that'd be evidence that maybe she knows more than him. How about number four, the man is very angry at his wife? Do you have anything in there? No. Number five, the man was surprised that the plant died? No. Yeah. Kind of. No. I mean, he was surprised it was not there anymore, but he wasn't surprised that it was going to die. Great. Yeah, we don't have anything really to say he was surprised. Since the man knows that Orwangi is not good for plants, he must love more plants than his wife does. It's a logical inference. Man says that the safest thing to do was to say nothing. His words suggest that he fears her reaction as he says something about the dead plant. Okay, but Andrea, I think, probably would have said something. And the wife's continued overwhelming of the plant, which the man notices and comments upon, suggests that he is not surprised that the plant died. So both of those are logical reasons. <coughs> I think I'm going to stop there for today. Okay? I'm going to like